Rusi F-35 paper has been written to try and move the debate on uh, around the aircraft from the delays and cost increases which have dogged its development uh, onto how the UK uh, armed forces can actually make best use of the aircraft once we get it. The uh, F-35 offers many capabilities, uh, particularly around its sensor suite and ability to get closer to high threat environments um, than legacy assets which can increase the combat power of uh, the majority of uh, existing assets which will continue to provide combat mass due to the initially small numbers of F-35s that we, uh, the UK will buy. Um, because there are these relatively small numbers, 48 probably initially, uh, in the early 2020s, uh, the F-35, while a potent strike asset in its own right, will need to also increase the combat power of assets like Typhoon, which will be required to deliver the main strike weight of a force. This isn't a bad thing. F-35 and Typhoon in particular complement each other very well, um, putting the RAF in a potentially very strong position. Um, but in order to do so, uh, the RAF-35 needs to be able to communicate uh, seamlessly with a variety of other platforms, such as the carrier, air defense destroyers, Typhoons, uh, without compromising its survivability by using traditional uh, data links like Link 16. Uh, in, that, in order to accomplish that, the UK government will have to invest uh, in a sustained fashion uh, money into data relays, um, w new waveforms in order to allow uh, essentially the F-35 to stealthily communicate what it sees to all the other assets in a strike group. Uh, if that can be accomplished, the F-35 will provide a substantial combat boost for uh, the ability of the armed forces to operate in high-threat environments.